because really when we're talking about all the problems that are occurring in coffee or in our world or in people's lives, we're really talking about how do we see those people? Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Map It Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this, I am very proud to say, is episode 1000 of the Daily Coffee Pro by Map It Forward. And I'm proud of having my friend Kira Kennedy to share this moment with me. There's nobody else that could have shared this podcast with me. Thank you for doing this for with me, Kira. It's a privilege. I'm honored <laughs> to be here. You have a lot of incredible guests and have done incredible podcasts. And to be here is is first of all fun. I always feel like we're just having a conversation between the two of us <laughs> where we have these podcasts. And it's it's just incredible. I learned so much from you. Thank you. Did I? I remember when I first told you that I was going to start doing this. And at the time, I I think I was just ridiculous, ridiculously naive about the idea that anyone would give a shit about this podcast. But I did always think about what this episode would be. Like, what's it going to be like when I get to episode 1000? Oh, oh. Amazing. So for everyone who's listening and everyone who continues to support this podcast by listening and caring about the conversations that we have and trusting me to have these conversations, I just want to say thank you and let you know how deeply humbled I feel by the fact that this podcast occupies the space that it does in our industry. Um, I'm deeply privileged to have the honor to do this podcast. It's my favorite thing that I do of all the things that I do. And I just am looking forward to the next thousand episodes. The reason we do this podcast is because our our tagline is conspiring to each other's success. And Kira and I have talked about this so much when when it first became what our tagline was. Um, and Kira was still at Baratza. And I remember you saying to me how you, how different that was for a, a company to kind of live by that standard of conspiring to each other's success and everything that we do in this business is geared towards that and this podcast is the hallmark of being able to hold our our industry to a, a different standard through this podcast. It's a no bullshit podcast. It's a podcast that talks about the things that most others don't want to talk about and um, our guiding principle is integrity and um, I'm privileged that people trust me with that. So having said that, let's talk about empathy. <laughs> How funny that we should be talking about empathy on the thousandth episode. So well, before, Here, go on. Before we talk about empathy, uh, which is a big topic, uh, I just want to say that in my, I took a, a leadership class through something called the Institute of Generative Leadership. Uh huh. And one of the main things about the leadership class was about solving problems or problems. Uh huh are missing conversations. Right. And you, you do conversation and you do it well. Thank you. And what your podcast is really about is those missing conversations. Because in any industry, in any culture, there are the conversations that are just too difficult to have. And we all ignore them, put them off, and yet they are underneath the pinning, the foundation of why things aren't working very well. And as I listen to you on Map It Forward, what you're doing is having those 
missing conversations. And you do it in a way that I think is honest and graceful and, um, and most importantly, creates hope. Hope that we can continue to move on and solve those problems in a way that, uh, again, I'm going to go back to my thrive together. Yeah. Because it's not, it's about coffee, but it's really, but not really. about <laughs> how do we live um, together? How do we take care of people that are growing coffee, picking coffee, drinking coffee. So the entire chain of events um, and coffee is a really great place to look at that. So mm. thank you, but it's really about missing conversations. And then you can go into empathy. Mm-hmm. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's first on-demand workshop, How to Become a Coffee Consultant, available now online for you to learn at your own pace with a certificate available upon completion. Click the link in the show notes to access today for just 50 euros. Because really, when we're talking about all the problems that are occurring in coffee or in our world or in people's lives, we're really talking about how do we see those people? Mm-hmm. And uh, when we talk, when you and I were saying we were going to talk about empathy, I always have to go look at what the definition of empathy is or compassion right. is or sympathy is or pity is or any of those kind of because they're all together. Yep. And obviously, each of us has a little different view of what empathy, compassion, sympathy are and what they mean to us. And those words are used incorrectly all the time, uh, partly because it's hard to get a definition of any of them. And so Brene Brown happens to be one of my heroes, and she Likewise. wrote a book with the definitions of emotions and she calls compassion the practice of recognizing and accepting our shared humanity so we Mm. treat ourselves and others with loving kindness and take action in this in the face of suffering and i think what i really see in that is how how do we see each other as humans with, and I said it before, with our strengths and our struggles and our stories and our origins and our current situations, our failures, our successes. And we can't walk into somebody else's shoes if I, mean, I can't, I can't walk in the shoes of someone who's black. I am not. Mm. I can't walk in the shoes of of a mother who has lost a child. Mm. If I can imagine what that might be like, and I can think I know what it's like. But really, what I part of the grace of compassion is being able to say, I know this would be tough or this situation mm. is is excruciating or this whatever but i really don't know what that person is going through and so how to look at the suffering that is going on in our world and how to walk with that uh, i think is compassion and and brene goes on to say that empathy is a is is a part of compassion but it's actually being able to walk with someone in their pain. And I don't even know if I can say what that means, Mm -hmm. but I can say that in leadership, whether you're leading a little company, you're leading a team, you're in a nonprofit, you're leading, leading a huge, huge company, how do we have compassion for our customers? for our employees, 
for ourselves? Mm. How do we walk with, with that grace and that understanding of trying to do the right thing? And a lot of people would probably say that companies, that's not what a company is for. It's really there to produce a product and produce um, profit. And, and I say that uh, that, that might have been, that's kind of what we thought, as you said, that's so 90s, that's so 80s, that's so yeah. 70s. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's still happening. Yeah. But how do we as leaders or human beings walk with empathy and compassion? And um, maybe that's a question for you. Thank you for asking me that question because I, I think a lot about what keeps me motivated to do this podcast. And I want to be a part of an industry that I can be proud to be a part of. And I'm not proud to be a part of this industry at the moment. And I haven't been for a long time. And I think that a big part of that is because there are a lot of people that are experiencing a significant amount of suffering in this industry for a lot of different reasons. And we celebrate elitist endeavors in this industry without looking at the problems that need to be solved. So we look at coffee competitions as a way of celebrating people's struggles. They struggled by getting ready to compete at these competitions. However, there's a whole bunch of other suffering that's happening across the entire supply chain on a daily basis that we don't have compassion for and we don't have empathy for. Business owners who have mortgaged their homes in order to make payroll, in order to grow their businesses. Coffee producers who can't afford the, the inputs for next year's crop because we haven't paid attention to the way that coffee pricing works. Associations who are making money off training without really holding any long-term strategy for what happens to those trainers once a market is saturated with trainers. Employees who don't really have any kind of support when they're the lowest paid on the consuming end of the market. Equipment manufacturing companies who convince business owners that they need to keep renewing their equipment, very, very expensive equipment, every two years so that they can stay relevant without any care for whether that's going to work in a favourable way on the that person's balance sheet or not and if it's going to crush them. We don't seem to have empathy and compassion for the struggles that are happening on a daily basis. And I think we really need to start paying attention to the pain that's happening every day from a group of people who are in a market thanks to a success fallacy where because there are so many cafes, it clearly must be profitable. And because there are so many coffee roasters, it clearly must be profitable. And Underneath that success fallacy is a whole bunch of people who feel like failures and they don't know how to fail with dignity. And a big part of my struggle as someone with a platform in this industry is the fact that we have a financial crisis on the horizon if it hasn't already started where certain, you know, different geographies are are deeper into it than I am here in the Emirates. I'm scared and I'm angry 
at the lack of compassion and empathy that we show to people who prop this industry up on a daily basis, the small business owners. They're the people who need leadership right now. They always have. Whether it's a small business owner at origin or it's a small business owner on the consuming end of the market. And quite frankly, we're failing them. And so the only way I know how to lead is to kind of create a space through this podcast and through the workshops that we do at Mapper Forward that somehow hopefully empowers them into feeling like they're being seen and that there is a way that they might be successful. I'm also angry that people who are clearly of a questionable moral compass run some of these companies that are predatory. And these companies are run like cults and they seem to be revered in our industry and celebrated in our industry. I mean, for me, Baratza was a shining hope in amongst a group of companies who were very predatory because you were the shining example of what it is to lead with empathy and compassion. Amongst a sea of manufacturing companies that were predatory in the way that they did business. So I feel like I'm on a bit of a monologue here and I didn't intend to do that. Um, But it just feels like we're entering and we have entered. It's not we're entering anymore, but it does feel like we have entered a time with the cans that we've been kicking down the road for a couple of decades as an industry. The road's ended and it's it's not ending it's ended and i i just don't know what happens next i'm hopeful actually i'm very hopeful and 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 the reason i'm hopeful is because i'm somebody who feels incredibly inspired the moment we start well the moment we stop listening to our own bullshit okay I get really, really hopeful when people start looking in the mirror because then we can start solving problems. But while we're being delusional and while we're distracting ourselves and while we're allowing ourselves to be distracted, nothing changes. So... Thank you for that. I think we started this conversation on, um, I think leadership and problem solving is about missing conversations. And having those conversations is the hard work, as you said. Yeah. And the hard work of looking at ourselves and and seeing where we've taken the easy routes and we all do take Mm. easy routes to success or to whatever and then as group to look at how we've taken easy routes and i think you know the big problems that our world is facing whether it's coffee or it's anything else Mm. um look at climate change, you you look at the developing countries, you look at war, immigration, you look at war, you look at equality, you look at whatever those problems are, you can see them all in coffee. Mm-hmm. And um, and how how do we move forward in that how do we take care? And the culture has said, uh, as long as you're making money, it doesn't doesn't right. really matter. And at what point do we say, wow, and let's talk about a coffee grinder. How many coffee right. grinders do you need? 
how is the coffee grinder, a new coffee grinder, better than the old coffee grinder or the new design or the new whatever? Is it good enough to put your old one in the landfill? At what point do we begin to say, huh, this, this whole approach doesn't work uh, if in the end uh, we continue marching towards a place where our planet can't support us or, or half the people on our planet are not living successful lives, successful quality, hopeful mm. lives. Um, how many wars do we have to have? I mean, they're huge missing conversations and you and I don't, aren't going to solve them here. But to pretend that the problems that we're talking about don't lead to these huge, huge problems yeah. um, is that's me. I mean, you can say you and I are naive about the way we look at the world, but if you can <laughs> pretend that you can continue to do things the same way and it's going to continue forever, uh, that's pretty naive too. Oh, I would so, suspect that that's way, um, I would rather be the kind of naive that you and I are because it's <laughs> we're naive and successful and the way that I, I look at it is... Um, the kind of naive that we are is, is the naive that plays the long game versus the other way that people see things, which is to move things along and make money quickly. Simple. We're, we're building slowly and we're building with intention and we're building things that last the test of time. And your leadership does stand the test of time unequivocally everywhere I go in the world it's rock solid and I'm proud to be your friend whenever your name comes up to see the way that that leadership has stood the test of time is a it's a it's a moment where you as the person who's hearing that um, I it's a mark that it's a privilege for me to be able to call you my friend. Like I have to constantly make sure that I remain worthy of that. So it, oh. it means that I have to lead myself with intention to be worthy of the people who set that example in my life for me, like you, like my mother, like Angelo. Being worthy to stand in the presence of those people I think is a part of wanting to constantly get better. So... This, while, while this has been a privilege, I wanted to make sure episode 1001 um, was about hope. And so, mm -hmm. folks, in the next episode, as we enter our thousands, I know that there are people out there who want to be leaders and don't know how to lead. And so in the next episode, that's what we're going to talk about, how to lead when you're not a leader. And if there's anyone you should listen to the answer to that question from, it's Ms. Kira Kennedy. <laughs> so join us for that one, folks. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks, friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.